Greetings, my lovely tubadors. To those of you who have been here before, welcome back. And to those who might have dropped in for the very first time, hello you. Please do consider subscribing to my small but growing channel. Now, slight departure from the current series of videos that I've been presenting. Um, they've been about exploring the various sort of brands of Fleurfa. Um, but today I am still very much in the Fleurfa camp. I'll be coming to the final part of that uh, that four part presentation, probably probably beginning of the next week. Um, but I just thought I'd do a quick video right now because I, I came across a video um, beginning of the week, uh, shoehorned in amongst you know the uh, the usual sludge of the many and various uh, flurfist outpourings that drop into the suggestion box on a daily basis um, from a flat art going by the channel name of Flat Earth. So no mystery behind what that channel is dealing with. And the reason I decided to click on this particular video is because the title posed a challenge, which was, none of you can debunk this video. Or do you bloody think so? Well, before we get to the actual, and to be perfectly honest, embarrassingly easy to debunk video, let's start with a little bit of background. The video footage is from the third test flight of the reusable rocket New Shepard, um, designed, built, and launched by uh, Blue Origin, which is um, an experimental aerospace technology company owned by one Nick Bezos, um, a name that I'm sure will be familiar to many of you. Now, the rocket, rocket was launched, it reached Apogee, returned to Earth and soft landed in about eight minutes, and throughout the entire flight, a camera that was located um, in the vent below the ring fins captured the whole flight in glorious HD. Now, I'll put a link to the original Blue Origin footage and Flat Earth's remedial class offering in the description below. Um, all in all, a successful test flight, which resulted in some impressive footage. Uh, but now, here is the bit that makes the flat ads pop their tampons out. The camera was fitted with a fisheye lens, and why not? It gives a very wide field of view, and it's likely that the footage was not only intended to give the engineers some valuable data, but would also provide the potential for some, you know, first-class PR when it was released to, you know, various TV agencies and posted on their YouTube channel. But as is usual in these events, the Fleurfoid Sea boom, conspiracy written all over it. The fisheye lens, they say, was obviously a, a cunning ruse used in order to distort uh, the view of the Earth, creating an artificial curvature so that we on the ground would continue to believe the lies being fed to us that the Earth is a globe. And the Fleurfist answer to this blatant piece of cosmological subterfuge was to use some specialist software that can convert the footage from the aspect of a, a lie-inducing, distorting fisheye lens to the truth-revealing, undistorted image of a 35 millimeter lens. Now, let's have a look at the original view of the Earth and the rectified image. There it is. You can see that there is a very, very plain curve to the Earth in one, and the other one looks relatively flat as you would expect. Now, the 35 millimeter image does indeed appear to be a lot flatter than the fisheye, but then of course, you know, it would. Earth is massive and we're all just particles of dust in relative comparative size. But the curve is still evident in the 35 millimeter image to anyone with two brain cells and a half decent pair of eyes. Now, I have not got particularly decent eyesight, um, certainly when it comes to, to reading, but even I can see that the 35 millimeter image shows that there is a curve to it. Now, don't forget many of these so-called flat earth researchers that they claim to have a trained eye, uh, so should easily be able to discern the, uh, discern the extant curve. But just in case they can't, I'll point it out to them.
Now, I will preempt the Flatard soapbox merchants here by pointing out that considering they feel the software that they use to adjust the image to reflect a 35 millimeter lens is obviously justifiable in order to promote their agenda, then the further manipulation of the image by me to highlight the still evident curve of the earth is also entirely justified. So there we have it, folks. I think Mr. Flat Earth can join the likes of uh, Jeronism and uh, Bob Nodell in that through their efforts, they have proved once again that the Earth is a great big spinning ball with us relatively evolved apes, some of us admittedly slightly more evolved than others, running around on its surface. So I did promise a very quick video this time. Um, as I say, part four of the four episodes examining the different kinds of flat ads and the various directions that they approach the subject from will probably be around sometime early next week. Um, so thank you for watching. If you got this far and are not a subscriber, please do consider clicking that subscribe button, click the bell notification, and YouTube will send you an email on my behalf the next time that I post one of my videos. Um, so until next time, please do look after yourselves, look after each other. Until then, Holvaur. Yeah.